Hello friends, welcome to Game It Up. My name is Dave and this is a review of Jubilee coming to Nintendo Switch. A review code was kindly supplied by the publisher so thank you very much for that and thanks to everyone for joining me today. Make sure you're subscribed if you'd like to see more from us in the future. So what is Jubilee? It's a 2D precision platformer where you take control of Jubilee who is certainly not a Lannister by the looks of it. She gets locked up and you basically need to find your way out of the jail. As the gameplay starts you find that you can go in several directions. Push pause and yes, there is a map that fills out as you explore in a satisfying way. At first it looks like a metroidvania in how the world is structured, but although it does have a metroidvania style world, it doesn't follow the typical metroidvania formula. What do I mean by that, I hear you all cry. Typically in Metroidvanias, you will find new items and abilities which will enable you to reach previously inaccessible areas by backtracking. But here, you can run, you can jump, and that's about it. There's no need to find any upgrades or whatnot. There's no need to come back to something that was previously unattainable. Just your basic run and jump. Oh, and there is a crouch too, but I never found a use for that. So this is a 2D precision platformer, I mentioned that, but it's not a linear one. You still have the open map that you can explore and at times you'll find a split path and it's up to you which way you go. The world is interconnected and can sometimes loop back to where you've been before, but getting lost or confused was never an issue for me. It was pretty easy to see that I was heading somewhere new just by checking the map. But what wasn't pretty easy is the gameplay itself. Like I said, it's a precision platformer, which means the areas you need to cross can be devilishly difficult at times. You will have obstacles such as buzz saws or giant ants in your way, and it is one hit kill at all times. Luckily, there are checkpoints scattered around the place, and the game is quite generous with them, so you never need to keep attempting a section that feels too long to perfect. I mentioned you can only run and jump, but a few moves within that include a wall jump which works as well as you'd expect, but also pressing jump again in the air gets you some extra air time. It's not a double jump of sorts, it's more like the twirl you do in New Super Mario Bros. The controls feel really good in this game, and although I have had my fair share of deaths, I never felt like it was the game's fault. The precise controls combined with the clever structure of the objects, especially when there are moving platforms or spikes that come in and out of the walls, are timed just right. When it comes to the checkpoints I mentioned, it's not just about having a handy respawn point. Most checkpoints are the standard brown stands that you see scattered around, but there are some grander looking shrines that act not only as checkpoints, but also warp points too. You can fast travel to any of them at any time, as long as you've already activated it of course. There are several collectibles in this game, the main one being the gems. Just a quick look at the inventory will tell you there are 999 gems overall in the game, but at the start an NPC tells you the goal is to get 666. I will keep this spoiler free as to what you get for achieving that. This is where the game really got me hooked though. I love me a collectathon and I love pointless completionist stuff. And what I really love with this sort of thing is a checklist and lo and behold the pause screen tells you how many gems there are in each area of the game and how many you've got. All colour coded as well. Collecting the gems isn't enough though. At the top it tells you how many are holding and how many are banked. So the gems don't count as collected until you bank them by reaching a checkpoint. It adds a little bit of challenge to the game as it prevents you from making reckless jumps to grab a gem and then death warp back to the checkpoint. Nope, you need to grab these gems while doing the stage properly and either go back to return them to the previous checkpoint for safety or power through. You also lose the gems if you warp before reaching a checkpoint. There are also 8 animals to rescue hidden around the map and 5 secret pages to find. These do not require you to take them back to a checkpoint at least. The game's world is presented in a pixel art style, which is not unusual for a precision platformer. 
Everything is clear to see and the different areas are clearly marked and have different colour schemes as well as music to match the theme of the area. A lot of the music brings me back to the NES days and some areas feel like something you'd hear out of Mega Man and the sound effects are reminiscent of what can be found in some Game Gear titles I remember playing. Although the sound of you hitting a checkpoint sounds suspiciously like the note sound effect from Banjo-Kazooie. The hazards in each area can differ too, such as the insect hive having giant bugs I mentioned, and the mines having the moving spikes. While there may not be much new when it comes to the hazards, I mean I've certainly seen most of this before elsewhere, the way they have integrated this style of gameplay into an open explorable world, rather than having it be a linear level based affair, is quite remarkable. If you get to a corridor you're really struggling on, then just take a step back, and there is most likely an alternate route you can take. There is quite a lot of charm to this game as well, with the NPCs you see scattered around that give you some handy advice or some funny things to say to you. Achieving the initial goal of escaping didn't take me too long, a little bit over an hour in fact, but I hadn't fully completed it, as I still had some animals to rescue and gems to find. This is where I really appreciated the game's design, as I was able to look at the map, see where the gaps were, and warp back to find areas and corridors I had completely bypassed before. And using that checklist to see where I'd missed some gems was really helpful. When I had collected enough to see the credits, it still wasn't a very long experience, less than 3 hours in fact, so be wary of that short playtime as this game will set you back £8.99, although there is a 10% discount until the 8th of February. It does seem a bit much for that, but I do want to emphasise what a fun time I had with this game and how brilliantly crafted I thought it was. And that short time it took me to beat it, just remember, that is just me. And I am just amazing at precision platformers. My skills are just unmatched if I'm being completely modest about it. So it may take others a long time to beat if they're not familiar with this style of gameplay. There is also an unlockable character when you beat it, who is a bit trickier to control, so there is some replay value with some added challenge. Overall, Jubilee is a fun, well designed and enjoyable to play 2D precision platformer. If you're a fan of this genre, games like Super Meat Boy and Celeste, then it's something to consider. I don't think this game is anywhere near as difficult as those two games I just mentioned, but it's a different take with the Metroidvania style map, and collectibles made all the more addictive with that checklist that really did absorb me into a platformer that was challenging but never frustrating. So thank you so much for watching this video, does this look like a game you'd enjoy? Do you like precision platformers? Let me know in those comments down below and make sure you click that like button and subscribe for more to come. Thank you again for watching, I'll see you in the next one.